So I'm going to be showing off a custom transform node that I hope will make facial rigs more intuitive for animation and will help make transfer of animation between different rigs more straightforward. So here I have a simple representation of a jaw control. So this one here on the left uses a default Maya transform node. And so typically with the jaw, you just rotate it up and down and do some other things. But something that can be kind of unintuitive is that the direction that you rotate might not correspond with a rotate value that you expect. For example, you're rotating the jaw down. So if you were to look at the values in the channel box or in the a graph editor, you might expect to see a negative value. So here I have a identical control, but it's created with uh, the custom transform node, normal transform. So you can see that when I rotate it down 45 degrees, it creates the same pose. But what I'd like to be able to do is set it to negative 45 and have negative correspond with this direction and positive correspond with this direction, because that makes more sense because it's going up for positive, down for negative. So to do that, I just need to come down here into the extra attributes of the custom transform node and click on flip rotate X. And that will just force it to behave as though the value in the channel box was getting multiplied by negative one before it gets applied to the orientation of the object. Now there is a issue with doing this simple solution, which is that now the manipulator no longer behaves properly because the manipulator is just trying to set the normal values into this rotate attribute, but it needs to take into account the fact that we have a flip rotate attribute now as well. So to combat this, I just have a custom manipulator and it's identical to the regular rotate manipulator it just also takes into account the attributes that we have on this custom transform node. So you can do that with all of the uh, rotate axes, or you can just choose which ones you want to flip. And it can really help to make certain controls more intuitive in the graph editor. Here I have a simple representation of a mouth corner control. So moving it all the way in the negative direction would represent a mouth pucker. Moving it out to the side would make the mouth wider, and then up would be a smile, and down would be a frown. So if you look in the channel box, you can see that when I go out to whatever distance I decide corresponds to the mouth being at its natural widened pose, because the distance I've traveled um, is the distance in world space, or actually in parent space, the value that we see here can vary depending on the scale of your character or just the design of your character. And it would be nice to be able to have that always be the same. So to say, okay, every time I go into the natural out pose, translate X is positive one. Or every time I go up to create a smile, translate Y is positive one. So there is actually a way to do this with a default transform node. If I create a uh, buffer group above the control, I can scale that group so that now the parent space has been scaled up to match the size of this sort of natural normalized range that we've defined for the control. Of course, just scaling up that parent group has caused some issues. It's made our control scale up well, the actual shape of it to scale up. But you can see that now when I go all the way out, this displays a one. Or when I go up, it also displays a one because I put in the specific values into the scale of the parent space. However, this has issues other than just requiring us to adjust the shape of the control curve. You can see that if I rotate this control along the z-axis, the shape starts to skew. And that's because obviously the parent space is no longer 
a uniform grid. It's a grid that's been stretched in one direction, but not uniformly stretched in the other two directions. So there is a way that we can fix this. We can use some uh, transform geometry nodes and some matrix math to correct for the skewing of the shape. But what we can't correct for on a default transform node is the fact that you can see that the orientation of the object according to the matrix and the local rotation axis no longer matches the orientation of the shape and what we would intuitively expect it to be. So if you look here, I've rotated it 45 degrees and the rotate manipulator matches that and the shape matches that. But if I go into object space, you can see that no longer does the y-axis line up with the actual shape of the control. So it's a partial solution, but it has problems. But if we come down here to our custom transform node, here I have it before I've set any custom uh, attributes on it. And you can see it behaves exactly the same. We're getting different values, well, values other than one when we go to the edge of the normalization range. But what we can do is instead of creating a parent group above the control, I have a local scale attribute. So I'll set local scale in X to be five because I know that this is a distance of five units. And I'll set the local scale in Y to two because I know that this is a distance of two units. And so you'll see when I start to drag it, we get that same sort of issue we had on the rotate manipulator. Because there's no longer a one-to-one -one correspondence between the manipulator and a single attribute, we have to use a custom manipulator. So again, I just have a custom translate manipulator that works identically to the default one. It just takes into account this local scale attribute. So you can see that now everything is working smoothly. And if we look in the channel box, we can see that when I move out to the edge of the normalization range, that corresponds to a value of one, up is one in Y, down is negative one, and then in the negative x direction, it's negative one. So let's see how this fares against the issues that the regular transform node had. So if I rotate this 45 degrees on the rotate x axis, you can see that the control shape hasn't been skewed because obviously we haven't created a different parent space to it. And that means that the manipulator, the shape, and lo the local rotation axis, which represents the actual matrix of the object, all three of them align nicely. And of course, everything still works if I have the custom manipulator on, even with a rotation. So here I have a third simple example. Uh, these two controls represent controls on your lip let's say the center of your lip. Something you may want to do is you might want to lift your lip up over your teeth. So I'll do that with both controls at the same time. Just a value of 1.5. And then you might decide that you want to curl your lip, but you don't just want to curl the control that's in the middle you want to apply a curl to all the controls along, like the inner, mid, and out lip control. So of course, you can't just apply it into the channel box of the control itself. We have to have a buffer group above it. But if we apply a rotation to make the lip curl, it's no longer curling in the position that we expect because the pivot of rotation for the control and the buffer group aren't the same. So you can actually get around this issue using default Maya nodes if we make the control a joint instead of a transform node because we can use the joint orient attribute as a sort of second rotation that gets applied at the same pivot. 
So our custom transform node also has this behavior. Instead of using an attribute named joint orient, uh, it's just called offset rotate, but it lets us apply a second rotation at the same pivot. And we can do that on all three axes, just like the joint can. And of course, that also still works with the flip rotate. That also gets applied to any offset rotate that you do. There's a few other attributes that I've included on the custom transform that don't address a specific limitation of Maya's default transform node, but they're useful for rigging. Like they make the rig cleaner. For example, you might have seen that I have a offset translate. So it's pretty common to have a control. Well, it's pretty common to have a macro control, something that controls a wide range of, of the rig, such as the entire upper lip, and then having micro controls that control a small area within that overall range. Sometimes you can accomplish um, the behavior of having the macro control drive the micro controls using just like a parent-child relationship, but that doesn't work if the control that's driving your control exists in a different component. For example, you might want to do something like opening up the jaw and then having the mouth corner kind of pull in to tighten around the teeth. Because if you think about it, when you open up your mouth, sort of the flesh at the corner of your mouth gets stretched and pulled in a little bit. So in order to do that, without creating any buffer groups above your control, you can just use this offset transform group to apply an extra transformation I'm sorry, an extra translation right on your control node. And so that's what the offset rotate is there for as well. You could use that for the same purpose. And then there is also an offset scale. So with the offset scale, it just lets you apply an extra scale to any of the three axes of the object, which has pretty limited applications because there isn't a lot of scaling going on in a facial rig, and usually if you're scaling on the body, it's going to be uniform scale for an entire component. But you may find yourself in a situation where you need this type of behavior, so I made it available in the custom transform. This offset scale works differently than if you were to create an object and then apply a scale to a buffer group above it. I can show you that here. So let me zero out all of these controls. Including the offset scale and everything. So if I were to do a rotation, a translation, and a scale on this object, and then do a translation, rotation, and scale on this object, you can see that the scale starts, a non-uniform scale applies that skew to the control, which we don't want. So instead, the order of operations for all these offset attributes is that first we apply the offset translate, and then we apply the regular translate. I can actually show you that with the actual attributes. So I'll go up four units with the offset and I'll go forward two units on the translate. And then we apply the offset rotate. So I'll rotate 45 degrees on this axis. And then on the rotate, I'll apply a rotation on the X axis. So you can see that we've gone Offset translate, translate, rotated with the offset rotate on the y-axis, and then rotated down with the rotate x attribute. So it's 
properly putting those rotations in order the same way the joint orient and the rotate attribute on a joint work. And then if I apply the scale, and then I apply, I'm sorry, apply the offset scale, and then I will apply the regular scale. Might have been hard to see from that angle oh, because this is flat along the x-axis. So I'll do it along the z-axis instead. You can see that those two scales have just been multiplied together and applied at the end of the transformation. So all of the translate and rotate, including the offset translate and rotate, aren't affected by the offset scale at all. So I hope this simple demonstration has shown off how using a custom transform node like this can improve the animator's experience with a rig.